Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 27th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and again today recording from Jacksonville, Florida, but teaching virtually in London, England. In Diaries today, we got a quick one by Jing, who looked into trends in Bluetooth vulnerabilities. It really felt like there were a lot of uh, Bluetooth vulnerabilities sort of in the last couple of years. And well, Wei Jing uh, is uh, confirming that uh, with his uh, survey. Of course, this coincides with a lot more use of uh, Bluetooth in mobile devices. Uh, Wei Jing here points out uh, the uh, COVID uh, contact tracing apps, for example, over the last year, which sort of, again, you know, focused more attention on Bluetooth security. But in general, it's a little bit hard to sort of figure out what to take away from it. It's certainly a target. And it also gets more and more difficult to actually live without Bluetooth or turn it off in a mobile device, given that uh, with disappearing headphone jacks and such, Bluetooth becomes more important to actually use the device itself. And Google today released Google Chrome 91, which fixes 32 different security vulnerabilities. Nothing outrageously dangerous. So I would just have Google Chrome do its job in updating itself. Maybe check in a couple of days that the update actually happened. Now, as announced back in April, Google Chrome also now discontinues the use of port 10,000. 80. This port has been found vulnerable to slipstreaming because some application layer gateways are using port 10,080. We'll have to see how that entire situation involves. There appears to be a little bit uh, whack the mole game here with more and more ports uh, being blocked in order to protect uh, certain application layer gateways. Port 10,080 is reserved for Amanda backup by IANA, but it's also used by vCenter. So those are the two applications that possibly could be used here for slipstreaming. And then we got a new set of attacks against uh, PDFs that are digitally signed, in particular certification signatures. Certification signatures are tricky in that they do allow a limited set of modifications to the PDFs, like for example, filling in certain form fields or adding a signature. And that, of course, is quite useful. If you think about it, you know, I'm signing a contract and then the other side sort of is able to, for example, countersign it and maybe fill in like the name of the person signing it or filling in some details like maybe a mailing address and such. But the problem is by allowing some changes and essentially allowing more or less arbitrary content in those fields that the second party is allowed to alter. It's possible to trick various PDF viewers into overriding some of the existing protected content of the PDF. So it's a little bit more of a visual issue than just a plain technical issue. But with the ability to, for example, also add things like JavaScript in some of the Adobe readers, for example, uh, there is a wide range of possible attacks that are possible even if the, the document was signed with a certification signature and the certification signature is still valid. The fundamental problem with signed PDFs in the past has been that it has always sort of been possible to add additional parts to PDFs that are not signed without modifying the signed part, or like in this case, make some specific allowed modifications to the PDF. And then we got an interesting vulnerability in the Nginx web server. Now the vulnerability is in the DNS resolver code. And yet again, DNS pointers are sort of to blame here. The problem is that there is an off by one vulnerability as these DNS pointers are resolved. So an attacker is able to overwrite one byte of heap memory. This 
can lead to a denial of service where the particular Nginx process just crashes and according to the advisory may be used for remote code execution just by simply triggering a DNS request from Nginx and then responding with a poisoned response. What makes it even more dangerous is that the vulnerability is triggered before the query ID of the response is verified. So this makes spoofing responses a lot easier and the nginx is actually not even that great in uh, validating responses in the first place so look out for patches i don't see the remote code execution uh, version of an exploit here coming anytime soon i believe that will be a little bit uh, tricky but definitely a denial of service should not be all that difficult to exploit well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.